In today's video tour, I'm featuring one of the coolest school bus conversion homes that I've ever seen. We're gonna take a tour with the owner who not only built this schoolie himself, but he also calls it his full-time home. Make sure to stay tuned to the very end of this video where he makes a tearful personal announcement that has inspired him to redirect his life's journey. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jax Austin. We're in beautiful Rufus, Oregon. Today I'm gonna to give you a tour of my beautiful home on wheels. So let's go take a peek. I have been living in this school bus for the past two years. Before that, I was in another bus for two years. So I've been on the road for four plus years. Before that, I was living in Venice Beach, California. And welcome to my little palace on wheels. Before my nomadic life, I was working in a bar. So while my friend ZS and I were in Big Sur, this idea came to me and I, I looked over at him and I said, dude, what if I got a school bus and then traveled around and made like YouTube videos, you know, travel content. And right after I asked him that question, as we're turning the corner, what was jumping in front of me, driving in front of me? It was a converted school bus. I kid you not. The hair of my skin jumped up. I got all this excitement. It honestly, it felt like it was some sort of message. Two months later, I pulled the trigger I bought a school bus and the rest is history. What drew me into the school bus initially was definitely the cost. There's a reason that they're so cheap and there's a reason that a class B is $15,000. Thing has a generator, a shower, a toilet, a fridge, a stove, sometimes an oven, a sleeper and everything. It's all, it's all done. And so you can actually spend more than that that camper that seems overpriced. But it's also fun, it's different, it's nostalgic, it's it's unique. If you're anything like me, you're not a tradesman, you're not a, a carpenter, you better have some amazing friends or some family members to help you. Otherwise, I mean, it's gonna be quite a trip, that is for sure. I paid 4,500, uh, let's say five grand for the bus. The whole cost, if you were to do it, and pay for everything would probably be somewhere close to maybe $30,000, I'd say. You know, I didn't want to have a half-assed bus. I wanted a very clean bus. Pretty proud of it. I am happy to own it, and uh, I honestly could not have done it without my friends. All right, what we have here, this Red Rocket is a 2003 International 9 window. This big bad boy gets about 9 miles per gallon if I'm lucky. This is actually my second bus. This one is a full-size 5-ton chassis, air brakes, air suspension. It's huge. It, it's kind of like a, driving a semi down the road. I framed it out with wood. We then covered it with sound deadening materials and then we filled the whole box with spray foam insulation. So road noise is really not a factor in this bus. It's very, very quiet when you're driving. You can have these volume conversations while I'm driving a gigantic diesel school bus, basically. It's pretty cool. All right, towards the back of the bus, we have this homemade ladder. Before I built my two buses, I knew nothing about welding. Up top, it leads up to a party deck, but you know what? We're gonna save that for later. Opening up the door here, under the living, well, I should say sleeping area, is my garage. This is where the uh, water system lives on the left-hand side. Opposite that, we have the solar system. This is where the bike goes and some of the tools, because let's face it, if you want a bus, you need tools on the road. All right, now it's time to show you guys the inside.
Okay, welcome to the inside of my bus. You know, there's a lot of work, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears that went into this thing. Let's start in the front of the bus. As you can see, we have two full-size six-foot couches, the marine-grade vinyl. The reason for the marine-grade vinyl was so that if somebody spills something, I don't have to freak out. I can just say, no worries, let me just wipe it on up. Down under here is some of my storage. I have a, a bunch of food down here. In a small space, you have to utilize every single square foot, every single pocket, it really comes in handy. This used to be a handicap door and I closed it off with some sheet metal, framed it out, installed an RV slide window. It's really great. It has a screen, you could have a nice breeze through there. If anyone's installing an RV window, make sure the drains go on the bottom. I decided to build myself what I'm calling the YouTube cabinet. And basically it's just three shelves with little organizers. And that's so friends and myself can put electronics in here. Every shelf has a outlet for 110 and USB. So say if I had six friends with me, everybody could you know plug in their cameras, laptops, etc. This wood is called bark pocket hickory. We laid over an epoxy resin on top, which gives it a high gloss, but also sort of smooths out any of the uh, imperfections in there. And then down below, we have all custom built cabinets. The least favorite part of my bus, the ceiling. This thing, I swear I aged putting the ceiling in, decades. This ceiling was a pain in my butt. Do not use tongue and groove cedar. Please, please, please use shiplap. Tongue and groove, shiplap. See the difference? You don't have to squeeze it in because when you're doing a concave or convex surface and you're trying to squeeze in something like this, it's a recipe for disaster. This was the most difficult thing I had to do on the bus. So I try to think about other things about the roof that I actually like, like the color. It's amazing. The finish, it's fantastic. We have lights, you know, it's great. Did a little whitewash, 50% paint, 50% water, and just kind of gave it like a little farmhousey sort of thing. The fixture here is actually a 110 fixture. This works off 12 volt. And then you have to use a 12 volt Edison bulb. Be very careful about this. If not, you will burn down your whole school bus house and you don't want to do that. We gave everything a, a water-based polyurethane finish to it, just, just to kind of keep the stains away, make it waterproof, things like that. The other side of the kitchen, the dark side of the moon. This is where all of the food preparation happens. We have a fancy dancy faucet. These are surprisingly expensive. You ever try and buy one? I was shocked. Down below we have a little trash can. This is where I keep some bigger items, pots and pans, you know, plastic bags, things like that. Is it just me or is the camping stuff really lame looking? Because I see these really good looking stovetop burners and European style, I guess. And I'm like, that is awesome. I want one of those things. Anyways, this is like a sexy kind of stovetop cooker. We have a nice, you know, plant here to create oxygen from the CO2 on off switch for the water pump. Definitely install one of those. If you don't do that, you're going to pull your hair out and you're going to burn up your pump. Trust me on that one. Down here, we got the storage stuff for the knives, for all the kitchen equipment, spoons, sporks, don't ask me why. Down below, we have ourselves this beautiful Dometic 12 volt fridge. This thing is bad ass. It is amazing. It is dual zone. You can temperature control it on the side. These have a lower amp draw than a traditional 110, which goes through an inverter. So this is highly, highly efficient. And if you are thinking about this lifestyle, this system, 12 volt fridge, is the only type of fridge you should have, unless of course you have a traditional RV and you have a three-way fridge. That's a whole nother conversation. Buy one of these, they are amazing. They're worth every penny. We have a full-size closet. We even have coat hangers, look at that. Mom's proud of me. And little things like that. So we got the belts, you know, we got the, the boxers, the shorts, etc. All very organized. So the other side of the closet is the bathroom. This is, my friends, an award-winning bathroom. On the inside here, we have 
Subway tiles, I know, really original, right? A friend of mine has a prototype composting toilet, which he gave to me to try. It's always interesting working with prototype things, but it was cool because I got to give him some feedback. I also got to pee on my legs a couple times and you know, I didn't have to pay a thousand dollars for a composting toilet. So that part to me is amazing. On the ceiling, did the same colors as the rest of the bus. We have these 12 volt puck lights and we have a pretty cool little shower massager type thing. We're filming this in the middle of a COVID pandemic. There is no magic happening in the bedroom besides sleeping and counting sheep. We have a beautiful memory foam mattress. Back here, we have a little artwork. This is from Raw Restorations. I have a couple six by nine speakers on the wall. My favorite thing about this back bed area is this little 12 volt fan. My ears ring from years of bartending. I like having white noise when I sleep. I also get really hot. So having a fan with low and high for me personally, it's awesome. I got two of them. So in the summertime with no air conditioning, it's really the only way that I can sleep and you know, and just feel rested. Up above me here might be kind of hard to see, but this is my friends, a hammock anchor. It's just fun to like add conversation pieces about your home that make it just a little bit different, you know, cause there's so many buses out there. There's so many tiny homes out there. It seems like everybody's kind of copying each other, which is great, but it's fun to have little things, you know, for your personality and make it, you know, different. Is it me or do you smell a hole in one about to happen? Let's head up to the party deck. All right. From the putting green, the other side has waterproof outside wakeboard speakers. So when there's a party happening, when there's a gathering, if you just want to dance or pants off, you can put some tunes on and enjoy, you know, a good song in some nature. Powering this bad beast, uh, as far as electricity goes, is 680 watts of Zamp made in the USA panels. In the middle of all this fun stuff is a Margard skylight. And the one thing I would suggest is if you do this, get yourself a tinted Margard piece because it gets blazing hot in the summertime. And actually I've been covering it with my yoga mat just to kind of cut down on some of the uh, UV rays and the heat. Cause this thing in the summertime is going nonstop, 100%. This is my max fan. My, uh, my life has changed a lot over the past four and a half years. And uh, for the last uh, six months, I've been dealing, fighting uh, cancer. Can cancer can change you and it can also reveal <clears throat> who you are deep down. It made me get to my true inner self of, of what I want out of life and, and, and what I have not yet completed. It just made me think, you know, what's really important. You know, all these material uh, goods that you acquire mean absolutely nothing at the end because you cannot take these things with you. I thought, you know, man, I, I didn't get a chance to drive to Argentina. You know, like, man, I should have gone. Like, I should have, moved, you know, moved to another country. I should have done this and that. But, you know, on the other side of it too, I thought to myself, well, look at how, look at how lucky you are to have, have done er everything that you've been able to do. Look at the amazing friends that you've made, amazing people you've come across, the, you know, the, uh, the privilege of, of having, you know, already traveled, you know, so many places. And, and I, I thought to myself, you know, the only most important thing in life really is 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 love
All right, well, this concludes the tour of the giant red bus with the golf course on top. But yeah, I just wanna thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this is inspiring to some of you guys to live a little bit differently, to minimize, to uh, take advantage of some travel. So hopefully I'll see you guys on the, on the road sometime and uh, take care. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's unique tour. Make sure to check back next Friday and I'll have another one for you.